South Africa's watchdog launched what is, is likely to be the country's biggest probe into bid rigging by building firms, further spooking investors who have punished the sector over fears that infrastructure spending may have stalled. The country's competition commission said it will investigate 65 construction companies related to bid rigging on up to 70 projects worth a total of 79 billion rand. I'm now joined by Marianne Wagner, associate at Denise Rates. Thank you so much, Marianne, for joining Hi, us. Hi, the probe was launched around two years ago yes. and at this point in time we've seen many companies, big names, coming to the fore and saying we're taking a proactive stance. So in other words, does this mean that they're admitting guilt? Yes. Um, what the Commission announced yesterday that there's been 150 markers um, for leniency applications and that means that parties came forward and they said we're willing to admit guilt if you'll go soft on us in this process. Um, and what the Commission says they came forward for is then bid rigging, um, which mm. is industry-wide in the construction industry. It's quite fascinating. I mean, the guys that are saying they're taking a practice stance, we're looking at Group 5, Murray and Roberts as well. Do you expect more companies to come to the fore as well? Yes, the Commission yesterday hinted that there are six or seven large companies involved already, but that is an industry-wide probe. And we, in fact, expect a large number of further companies to come forward um, after yesterday's announcement. Well, I mean, looking at the leniency and the fact that, obviously, they're going to be... Um, offered protection in some way as long as they settle on the fine. Uh, what kind of fines are we expecting here? Um, because fines work on a, a total of 10% of potential turnover, it can be quite large numbers. What the Commission yesterday offered that is that if companies come forward at this stage and they make use of the fast track procedure, the Commission will offer them smaller fines. Mm -hmm. um, what those numbers will be, we don't know at this stage. Um, Temekosi Bonakele from the Commission hinted that it would be a large amount, but we don't know. What will their def defense be? I mean, at the end of the day, we're hearing news that, uh, you know, they, they allocate tenders during meetings, they police each other, um, something called the party. Yes. Uh, so they basically, you know, convene and, and discuss the industry quite extensively. What would their defense be? Um, Eleni, unfortunately, bid rigging is one of the prohibitions in terms of the act. That's a per se prohibition. Yeah. So if you're found guilty of that, you don't get to raise the pro-competitive arguments. Um, so once parties are found guilty, that's it. The best offences they would have would be in mitigating um, and trying to get lower fines and we expect them to raise arguments such as the buying power of the state and so forth. Um, what would what is the argue for, for job retention and you know ensuring that you pass on as many uh, incentives to the consumer as possible? Yes, of course, um, the purpose of something like bid rigging and price fixing is actually to keep prices artificially high. Um, so the Competition Commission would look into those arguments quite carefully. Um, the companies would in all likelihood still have to either admit guilt or be found guilty, but those arguments might go to mitigating circumstances for them to get lower fines. Mm. Uh, we know that there's many such cases uh, you know, on the uh, minds of many uh, out there, and of course Competition Commission is, is investigating various industries at this point in time. You know, It's a difficult question, but do you think that price collusion is completely unavoidable in those big industries? Um, I think South Africa has got highly concentrated markets, and I think parties should be quite careful at what's normal market behaviour and what's a contravention of the Competition Act. Um, just knowing your competitors' actions and competing with them actively is, of course, not a contravention of the Act. Once parties start speaking to the competitors, rig, um, doing bid rigging, price fixing, market allocation, that's a clear contravention of the Act. Um, and unfortunately, there's no defense to that. And as we can see from yesterday's media release from the Commission, is they're quite aggressively going after these parties. Um, so I recommend that they all seek legal advice as soon as possible. Well, Marianne, I mean, we're looking at 70 public and private projects, including work done for the World Cup and, of course, for the car train as well. What about government's role? Because it, the, during the, the tendering process as well, we also know there was many question marks as to who would get the tender and whether government was uh, perhaps being favorable to certain companies. Yes, I think, um, government plays a large role here in that they were the victims of some of these bid rigging projects. Um, as you correctly pointed out, we're talking about the Gao Train project, uh, World Cup stadiums, and also some of the road projects. But of course, they're not the only victim here in that the private sector was also involved. And at the end of the day, it's the man on the street and the taxpayer that pay too much for these projects. So it does really affect the whole economy. Mm. Uh, Marianne, where to from here? I mean, clearly, as we said, many companies have come to the fore and said, well, these are the potential contraventions uh, that we've been included in. Uh, do you think that all the companies are going to come to the fore and say, well, this is what's been going yeah, on? Yeah, Eleni, we at Denise Rates take the view that this is quite a risky process in that if a company doesn't come forward, there's a large risk that someone else would confess to b um, bids that it was involved in. So chances are that the competition authorities would know about it in any event. And even if they do come forward, it's not a risk-free process in that the Commission made it clear in their documents from yesterday that it's a with prejudice discussion. 
Um, so we really do recommend that parties seek legal advice to make sure that the process runs fluidly. And just let's look at the party again, and basically that was the group uh, that was called when they, they used to convene, or at least allegedly this is what uh, the Competition Commission has come out with as well. Uh, you know, what if the, uh, you know, they come out with a defence saying, if we didn't join the party, yes. then uh, you know, we would have dire consequences for the business yes. as well? I think there's some small businesses in South Africa that do experience that. Um, we've seen where there are hardcore cartels and industries, small businesses feel that they were almost bullied into it. Unfortunately, that sort of defence in terms of the act. If you participate in the cartel behaviour, you will be found guilty. Um, they might want to raise, this, raise it in mitigation. Um, but what's quite interesting, what the Commission mentioned yesterday, is that this party was run by quite high-level CEOs and MDs of the companies. So where parties might want to argue that it was done at a low level and they didn't know about it, um, we doubt if this will be the case in this instance. Say, for instance, this is also a, leg uh, a legacy issue and, you know, former CEOs and managing directors were involved and literally it's just been passed on from uh, one CEO to the next. Who's going to take accountability? Are these, you know, heads of the companies going to be fined? Yes, I think that's quite a common question in the South African market. Um, a lot of people inherited problems from ex-people. Um, unfortunately, the liability is the firm. So whether it was done by an ex-CEO or MD or current one, um, if the effect of the conduct is still ongoing today or has been in the last three years, the company would still be liable. Um, so there's no personal ramification for this? Not at this stage. There is an amendment to the Competition Act which has been signed which will introduce personal criminal liability for individuals involved. Um, that is not in place yet. Um, so at this stage, no personal liability, but for the companies, definitely.